I'm paying them to train. It's cost me more to hire the hall. I've also run boot camps on a field, set up the boot camp, and then and maybe the weather's been bad and stuff like that. Yeah. I've had no one turn up. Yeah. And it's demoralizing. Putting yourself out of there like that, that's the fear. That ever, that's why no one does it. It's no. that fear. Looking to doing something different. Don't be the stereotypical personal trainer that's going to do. Focus, focus on something that you're good at and you know that you're good at and go down that route. That's my best advice. How did you become a personal trainer? I actually, before I became a personal trainer, was working in recruitment and I hated it. Absolutely hated being in an office environment. Yeah. And at the time, I had a friend that was a PT and he was like, Lou, I think you'd be great at it. You should do it. Maybe go and do a course, try and get out of that job that you're in. And I was like, oh, a bit um and ah about it. And um, I thought, right, actually, yeah, I'm going to do it. So actually handed him a notice at work and booked myself on a three-month course and I just ended up doing that course and then kind of fell into it really and i think sometimes the only decision you need to know is do i like what i'm doing now yeah and if the answer is definitely no yeah then you can try something else and you can never guarantee what you try is going to be right but you can guarantee what you're doing is wrong absolutely so when i every day i'd get in my car and i'd drive to warrington and go into this office and i'd sit there and i'd be like and i don't know if that's because i'm just itching to do stuff as well can't sit still like I can't be sat at a desk for six to seven hours a day it's just not me and um so once I'd obviously done my course I was quite fortunate when I was doing my course I was I was actually shadowing other PTs yeah so that really Big helped way. yeah how long have you been personal training now eight years really yeah wow great I, know. I didn't realize you'd been doing it so long I, know, I didn't how long <laughs> how long did you personal train in a commercial gym before moving to more of a private studio? Uh, so that would have been, yeah, three years. I'd say it was, yeah, around three years. And it, was, it wasn't it was a massive commercial gym. It was a no. like, s- slightly smaller gym that obviously allowed normal people to go in and train. But yeah. Um, How was that three years in comparison to the three years? Uh, so, again... I actually really liked it in regards to the fact that new people were coming in all the time. Yeah. It helped. And the kind of person that I am, I will always, you know, say hello to anyone that comes yeah. in. So as as you're going into a commercial gym, it's kind of like you need to get to be known. Um, and that's what I tried to do basically as a, as I was starting off as a PT. And they were quite helpful in that in that sense as well. They'd give me some referrals, which was great. Yeah. Um but other than that, it was, it was really good, actually, in some sense. What senses weren't so good? Uh, um, so there's always politics yeah. in regards to um, gym owners or... I think any small business yeah. can is susceptible to small conflicts bringing big yeah. implications on the business. So... It can be just down to, for me personally, was making sure that you're having to wear particular clothing, and if you weren't, all right, it's just little things like that. Well, I won't go into detail. I won't uh, press you anymore. But uh, <laughs> yeah, basically issues with yeah, yeah, management, <laughs> manage interpersonal. With yeah, things. but I think I think that actually brings a lot of gyms down. Yeah, yeah, we won't mention any, but even like around here, we know of quite a few gyms that have like either failed or come to their knees from literally just inter-staff conflict affecting the wider bit. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I don't I don't know if they actually, well, the support, there's not a great deal of support. Like, you know, if you're coming out of a, if you're coming into this environment and it's, it's quite scary and you're quite new to it. Yeah. You need that support. And I think this is one of the things that... I think a lot of the time the gym owner sees the PT as a opportunity to make money. Yeah. And what really be nice if the gym owner and the PT are trying to work together yeah. to like provide a service. Yeah, I agree. Um, Definitely. We offer so like a pay as you go system while they yeah. build up to try and not just leech them with a monthly rent. Yeah. Away now at Synergy. 
Well, and that sh- should help people introduce in gradually. Obviously, we have to make something out yeah. of personal training, otherwise we wouldn't make any money anyway. Yeah. We are a personal training that's student. I agree, agree. And that's the thing, and that's one of the these big commercial gyms at the moment. They're you know you're going in with no clients, and they're asking for big rental. Yeah, every month. It's crazy. Yeah, how on month one can you survive? Tell what was it? What did Total Fitness get oh, to at one point? It's, it's like five, six hundred quid a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, this actually links well to my second question, which was uh, there's this statistic of like 90% of people who qualify as a personal trainer are no longer working as a personal trainer after the first year. Wow. And I did look. I he- I've heard that so many times. I looked up to see if it's just something people say. Yeah. And they did. There was like a ratio of how many quali- people qualify each year to how many people leave the industry. And it did look like it could be about 90% of people will quit in their first year. And I, why do you think that is? I well, again, just going back to what we've just said, talked about then. Um, <clears throat> I think people see this, this like highlight of oh, we can go in, get a get go in, get loads of clients, and be absolutely fine. But it's never the case. It's just I think they see the highlight of oh, it seems quite a nice job and hours. You can do what you want. It's none of the case. You've got early mornings, late evenings, and trying to find clients. Like you say, it's not easy. It's a luxury. It is a luxury to try and have a PT in some ways. I think having the one reason, I think having the high gym rent yep. as standard in most gyms, yep. and if that's the only option to start paying a monthly rent and you have yeah. z- you're have you starting from zero, yeah, which incredible. obviously most people are starting from, yeah. That makes it very difficult to sustain. Probably like four months in, you're thinking, I'm still losing money. So of yeah. course you're going to quit, which is reasonable. So I think something needs to change in the system of how most places operate if they want to keep person yeah. trainers. I think the second thing is, though, this is not the fault of the gym, but I think a lot of people think, I'm interested in the gym, so I'll be a good personal trainer. I agree. But I yeah. think what you have to think is, are you interested in people? I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, you should build. You've got to build a, you know, rapport with that person, and get to know the ins and outs. Yeah. And some people are quite hard. Yeah. They are quite hard, and you have to like stick with it. And it's about it's a it can be a bit of a mental battle. But I think the hardest skill are the people skills, and that's actually yeah. potentially the most important skill. So I don't. I say this to my trainers. You can train someone to be a better personal trainer. Yeah. So you can obviously they need to have their basic course. But then you can teach them like how to like do all the compounds, lifts, yeah, really better. You can coach them up, but you can't teach someone to have better interpersonal yeah. skills. So no, I agree. Like agree. with our trainer, I'll mention she won't mind me mentioning. With our trainer Rachel, she was working um, at the gym I used to work. Yeah, at, and I just thought Rachel will make an amazing personal trainer because of her interpersonal. Skills. Yeah, I didn't. I'd seen her in the gym, and obviously she did. Uh, she was working out, looked in great shape. Yeah. But the skill she had was, oh, she is amazing with people. She will be a great personal trainer because she can learn the rest. And obviously she went on to do her qualifications. But that is actually, I think, if I'm looking for a new trainer, yeah. that's what I look for first. And then they need to have the basic qualification. Yeah. Well, is that, that saying is that people buy from people. So That's a good phrase. I like yeah. Anytime you can introduce a quote into the podcast, I'll, I'll snap that. Okay, I can clip that. So that would be perfect. Um, I've got two questions. Let's go with what's the best thing about working as a personal trainer for you? Okay, so I, I think one obviously when you take in taking someone as a new client and you see that they obviously get a lot better in regards to like mental, but mentally, physically, and just seeing the results, everyday life. To, you know, I can do certain exercises with someone or they might have a certain injury and you can see that they feel a lot more confident with themselves. So that's probably for me. Um, I'm just, just getting to know people. I think that's probably the best thing about personal training. And obviously, I like the the hours that I do work. Sometimes they're not great or sometimes they are. It gives me a little bit of freedom. But um, most of all, generally, I just love talking to people. And that's it. And training them, getting them into shape and seeing how they grow in confidence. That's probably a big reason why you've been personal training for eight years. Yeah. Like you said, like, what's the most important trait? Well, being, being able to talk to people, getting yeah. to know people. 
obviously you're into your training as yeah. well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm learning myself as well as I'm doing it. So I'm learning how people react in different ways. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, but most of all, it's just seeing how that person changes mentally and I, how their confidence grows. That's probably the best thing that I, I probably enjoy the most. When, I think so as well. I think yeah. even the getting someone physical changes. So yeah. taking a client, let's say you've helped a client yeah. to stone. The reward isn't seeing that client two stone lighter. It's seeing that yeah. client feeling good about himself yeah. two stone lighter. I've had clients where I've gotten to lose a stone and they're still unhappy and still talk about himself in a negative way. Yeah. And I get no satisfaction from the fact they've lost a stone. No. So try and, I try and tell them, like, don't be happy when you get to your target weight. Yeah. Like you should always in you should always try and enjoy yeah. enjoying the like every step along the way. Yeah. And your confidence should keep building. Yeah. It shouldn't just be like when I get to six pack abs, I will be happy. Yeah. They won't. So one of my clients has just lost um good good story actually, ten kilos. Uh and he's he is again, but he's still not he's happy. Yeah. But he's not happy. And I'm like, that's a good thing. I'm like, it's a really good thing. Even though you're, you've, you've got a, you've got to the target and you've lost 10 kilos, I'm like, I want you to keep going. It's like, yeah. I, want to, I want you to get to a place where you've never been before and it's and you feel great. And I think they have to be happy with their achievement, though. Yeah, I get that. But not, I mean, not necessarily content with just... <clears throat> he's like, oh, I just feel like I could be a little bit better. And I'm like, that's good that you've got that. You've got that. You can still have to be better. Yeah. It's, just don't want him to stop. To yeah, it's, it's trying to ride the line between body not having body dysmorphia. Yeah, as in if they're still negatively talking, saying, "Oh, I feel like I'm a bit overweight," and they're not overweight at yeah. all, then it's an issue. But yeah, if you say if they're like, "Oh, I've got these goals I'd like to achieve," obviously as a trainer, it gives you something yeah. to keep going with. What about um, what's the most challenging part about being a personal trainer? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Honestly, I would say when you're, and this is again going to a new client, if you're starting up as a PT, I would probably say being let down, being let down by people. Like cancellation. Cancellation. Or yeah. Or trying to, um, try, again, trying to get gain new clients is quite hard sometimes um, for me personally um, because I'm very old school and now times are changing. It is very down to social media and that side of things. So, um, but again, I think probably, yeah, just cancellations for me. I find it quite demoralizing because I would have, I've got a plan. Um, but yeah, just I think that I actually think that's really tough because people who are giving you advice and they are right. Yeah. Say, all right, you charge, you know, cancel, you charge them and. And it's hard. It's hard to ask that person for that. It's not an idea. What they're not seeing is that you spent three hours a week developing a relationship. You might know that they're like stressed or picking their kid up. And you know the details sometimes as to like why they're cancelling. Or And it's easy maybe as like an administrator to charge someone. But if you're the the front line. No, I agree. It's probably the best way of doing it. Yeah. It's not not easy to to send a message because you're, Again, going out, if you're a new PT and you're kind of wanting to keep that person on board, yeah. it's how do you, you don't want to say it in the wrong way, like, oh, it's not good. Like, I'm quite firm. We'd be like, you know, you've missed your session. You've got 24 hours or 48 hours to pay for that. And if you miss it, I need I need a good reason yeah. to pay. And I think it's life or death. Just. Two things there. They should prepay. Yeah. So if you've already got the money... It's a lot easier yeah. to charge them for a cancelled session. That's and the second one is I think every personal trainer should have a cancellation policy. Yeah. Now, I'm quite soft, as you're probably soft yeah, than me. Yes, I am nice. So we yeah. could have like I think if it's on the day, <laughs> you and if it's on the day, they were I had one this morning. They requested a later time. Yeah. Now. I, they texted me late last night. I'd already gone to bed. Yeah. So I woke up in the morning, read that. It was meant to be my first session of the day. Yeah. It did throw me off. But um, I, So I looked at my diary. There was an open slot later, yeah. so I gave it to him. But had there not been an open slot, I would have just charged him for yeah. the session. But if it's the day before, I just let him 
change because yeah. the people I know so well, it's like I get, and again, this is down to the person maybe as well. But <clears throat> I um yeah, I've, so f- for example, I had a client who does prepay me, and it it's so easy sometimes. It depending, and again, like, this is down to people's how much they earn and what they don't earn, mm. um, and he can just say, just take it. Don't worry about it. I'm not yeah. gonna make it. Yeah, but it's still quite. For me, I've got a plan, and I wanted to see him, want to keep him yeah. motivated. I'm like, oh, it's frustrating, but on a day to day, you don't do it for the money. No, when you're doing a personal training session, of I, a doubt you're thinking about, no. oh, I'm earning this amount. You're yeah. just thinking about doing the session. No, I just yeah, and I quite enjoy it. And it's it's like when you've got like a gaff, and this is again something we we'll probably talk about. It's like as a PT, you want to be busy. Yeah, you want it to flow. You don't want that. Like yeah. crap in the middle, do you know what I mean? Yeah, how many daps in your day? Yeah. One, it lengthens your day. It's a bit of a day killer, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like, so that's actually my hardest thing. That's the most challenging thing for me as a personal trainer is the split shift, Yeah. which is almost every trainer out there works there. Yeah. You go to work in the morning, what, 6 a.m., no. maybe till 10, and depending on well, the time. Yeah. yeah. And then you go back to work in the evening at the earliest 4 p.m., isn't it, really? Yeah. Until, Until whatever as time. 10 now, I think if you're a London yeah. trainer and you've got that pressure of like a super high gym rent, high right. rental cost, you're probably talking like 6 till 10, 4 till 10, 10. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think, um, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever worked quite that extreme. I've definitely done the 6 a.m. till yeah. 10. Usually I don't work past 8 p.m. if I can help it. Yeah, but that's hard for me as a family. I feel like that's like a single man or woman or a younger person's working hours. Otherwise, so my kids about to go to school. What time do they go to school? Like nine? I don't know, half eight, nine ish. They get back three or four. So I'm going to go to work while he's out, and when I'm coming back, he's already gone, and then I'm off in the middle of the day, and then he's coming back at three, and I leave forty five minutes later to go to work. Like yeah. it's, that's a tough. So I'm trying to, obviously I'm trying to transition out where I do one block in the morning yeah. now. And then I've got my YouTube channel, which I'm doing work. Yeah. And I've got some other plans with stuff like that. So for me, but it took me 11 years of personal training yeah. to do that. Well, it's, not everyone can do that from day one. So that's not a problem with the job. No, as in not. The actual what you're doing, that's a problem with the structure. Yeah, I agree. I think that if you can be, if you're lucky and you can do that and still, you know, still spend time with your family, fantastic. But it, yeah. it is difficult. PT hours are tough. Yeah. They do, it takes out of you, you know, come Saturday, Sunday, you, you need that family time. Yeah. You're quite tired. Yeah. The job, yeah, the job is fun. Yeah. And I think it's great to do my hobby as a job. Yeah. So I would be researching like training techniques, tips and stuff. Whether I was... Whether I was be getting paid to do it or not. Yeah. And that's a big plot. And this is what I was uh, going back from what we said before. Working in an office is just, for me, trying to focus on something. It's just not great. Whereas I know when I've got like, if I'm building a plan for a new client and I know what they need, it'll be quite like, oh, I could try this and yeah. I can try that. And it's quite nice to, to do that. Whereas, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, I'll go to bed thinking about programs yeah i could do this and this yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like why it's not because i think i have to it's because yeah. it's actually genuinely interesting so there's definitely a lot of pluses but i've got another one uh what are there some of the misconceptions what are some of the common misconceptions people have about being a personal trainer or a personal trainer i think they think it's a luxury life a luxury life but it's not and it's going back to these hours again isn't it you're working from 6 a.m sometimes 5 a.m till 12 and then going back having a couple of hours most i sometimes have a bit of a sleep well so then you've got to train as well you've got to look good yeah. you've got to look good all the time um so yeah it's probably the two the hours the misconceptions of that um that you work when you want yeah, yeah yeah it's not like that it's not you work when your clients are free yeah that's probably the most two things unless you can think of anything else i've got the um people think one hour session is one hour's work yeah. So people go, uh, how much do you charge a session? And I charge, well, uh, let's say about 40, around 40 yeah. pounds a session. People are like, oh, you get paid 45 pound an hour or 40 pound an hour. Yeah. I'm like, no, I get 
that's not how it works. Like, yeah. I'm not, if someone goes to work, they do eight hours in a row and they're yeah. getting 40 pounds an hour, they yeah. get eight times 40. Yeah. I don't do eight hours of work and get 40 pounds an hour. Uh-huh. I do one session, which you've booked in, you've designed the session. Also, a lot of the stuff you do outside, around, and around that, yeah. yeah, is not paid. I say 50% of what you do is unpaid. Yeah. It's just, I call it contact time now. Okay. So I, I say I get 40 pounds per hour's contact time. Because there's, there's it, yeah. other hours outside of that which aren't contact time. Yeah. And, and I'll talk about it more in per week. So it'd be like, all right, we're going to do one session per week. It's not one hour because I'm probably going to design them a program, yeah. send them a program, make sure they're doing it. Even this is not the, the client's responsibility, but even like doing marketing, my tax return. If you work for a business doing stuff, every hour you spent like designing marketing material for that business would be a paid hour. Yeah. While it's unpaid. If you're, yeah. so this is the same problem for all self-employed people. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's not like it's like you have to make all of your money within a small amount of hours in yeah. the day to carry you through the whole week, really. Don't yeah, no, I agree. So yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Another one is that people think you're training wealthy people all the time. No, not always. I think mm, probably only like twenty percent of my clients I'd like consider like typically wealthy. Yeah, I think the majority of People are just normal people. Yeah, I agree. And I think that these are people that are, and again, I'm mean, probably going to ask me this question again, but um, it's people that struggle to go into a gym that need that confidence. And that's why we're here. Definitely. I think some of my clients are like that. I think sometimes some of my clients are people that like to outsource areas of their life, though. Yeah. So they might outsource their like email responses to a PA. Yeah. And they want to outsource the mental aspect of having to think about their fitness yeah. to a personal trainer. I agree. And that's fair. They've got their appointment booked in just like yeah. or like like they'll hire an accountant. And I'm just another like schedule in the diary, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. Um, but I think it's it's release for them as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, they've released the mental yeah. area of what am I going to do today? When am I going to train? What am I going to train? How many times do I have to train? They can take all that information dump that onto me and then they can think about whatever they're yeah. good at doing, whatever they're good at There's, making money from. It's not having to think, isn't it, almost? Yeah. Do that fit for them or... Yeah. Well, what do you think, you've already talked about this being a challenge for you, but what do you think is the best way to find clients as a personal trainer? So if, if I was going to say old school, here my stomach now, can you... <laughs> old school. Um, so back in the day, and you'll probably, you've probably heard lots of PTs, but when I first started as a PT, I would make sure that I would go around the gym and ask anyone if they need any help. I would give them a 20-minute taster, and that's why I would do. Whereas now, it's so become so social media-based, and I and it's why I struggle with, personally, and I'm not great at it. I probably could do a course on it, and I'd probably need to. Um, I really find that that seems to be the way that how to get new clients you need a website you need to be physical have you actually found that your experience is and <laughs> have you got many clients is that how you get clients no from? not or really. is that just how you think you should i probably that's how i think but i most of it is word of mouth yeah yeah word of mouth i ask i'll say to someone if they know anyone that's looking yeah. to get trained or a family friend family or friend but yeah that's so i don't think instagram is a good way to get clients as a personal trainer. No. Especially now, now that the Instagram's changed its algorithm to be yeah. more focused on reels, which is more focused globally. So that's it. I've created a reel. It's about like how to put lifting straps on. It's just like a yeah. tips on. I don't know how many. It's not like, I'm not great on Instagram, but it's got like over 100,000. No, it is good. And that's just a, a great little tool for someone. But what does that, how does that benefit my personal training career in Chester? Like, not a single person off my most successful post has ever DM'd me saying, oh, I saw you. Because th- it could be yeah. like 100,000 people from US, India. But it's it's not about what you put on. It's more so about you're acknowledged. You know, someone knows. Say if you're working through Chester yeah. and someone knows you, they'll go, oh, I've, and I've seen him. Oh, I know of him through through." social media yeah i think instagram can be a good shop window as a taster into who yeah. you are and what your like training 
style is like. Yeah. But I very rarely find that someone will like cold DM you or me yeah. for a session. I think, like you said, it's actually interpersonal. And I think really it's about your cl- people who know your client. If your client's having a good experience, yeah. anyone they meet, you know, they're doing that every week as an appointment. So naturally people are going to be like, what are you doing tomorrow? And they'll mention it. Yeah. I think it's there. It's the network of your clients, friends, family. Yeah, I agree. It grows from there. I think the same as maybe like a plumber or so, you know, do, do you know any builders and the builder? Yeah, you know, yeah it's always word of mouth, word of mouth, yeah. word of mouth. It's always... And I think people focus too much on Instagram. Yeah. And they put all their time because they can hide away in their living room doing it. Yeah. But I think you need to get out, like, you talk. You talked about Rachel. We mentioned her before. Where does she get clients? She gets clients in the head. Is that networking? She gets networking. Clients, yeah. yeah. And she gets out into the world and gets clients in the actual real um, world, and um, not on your phone. I, I I remember actually at being in a bar with Rachel, and it's fun, we were fun talking about this the other day because I was at a barbecue with her, and um, she, she she literally would be in a bar, and because she's got such good arms, I'd be sat there. And someone would just come over, oh my God, your arms are amazing. Yeah, but then she has to have the confidence, the confidence to tell them, tell them what they do. And it's not selling. It's, no. You just she's, tell them what you do. It's really good. They ask They ask you, oh, I'd like to get into shit. Yeah, yeah. That's how I get clients. Who's your PT? Yeah. yeah, and it goes from there, yeah. Most of my clients are friends of my clients or people I have met somewhere by being actually in the real world. Yeah. Now... If you they want them want to look you up, it's nice to have an Instagram page yeah. with a few of your thoughts on training on there, yeah. so they can get your style. If I'm there and I'm like a booty builder special page, <laughs> and some guy wants to build biceps, then it's, it's not not a good match. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. So I I don't think like necessarily if you want to be an online coach, yeah, diff- yeah, everyone wants to be an online coach these days. So yeah, they do. It's big. Let's go. Who would be your ideal client then? Um, ideal client would be someone that someone that just male, female, male, female. You can talk about ideal. It's not that you can't take on. Yeah, I I think I am a lot. Of, I'd probably say I have mixed like fifty fifty female and male. So I really okay. really, really want to say that, but um, someone that's fairly new to it. Can't just get their head around what they if they're doing things right or wrong, and that's just everyday public. So it's a really good question. Especially the biggest change. Yeah, you can see the biggest change in beginners. So. Yeah, beginner that's that go someone that's going to the gym. Prime example, goes to the gym and they've not been shown how to use, you know, a, a machine or how to do a squat correctly. Yeah, this is that's probably the perfect person that they've been going, but they're not too sure. Yeah, yeah, what they're doing quite right. That's probably the best thing for me. What about yourself? I they they can be rewarding, yeah. but I feel like uh, the process is similar for all beginners. Yeah. As in, you can, you might want to be more specific with their goals, but yeah. if they don't know how to hinge at the hip, how to squat. Yeah. If they're not used to just the coordination of balancing dumbbells yeah. and things like that. All those things they have to learn, regardless of what their goals are. Yeah. Because I've been doing it for eleven years. Yeah. Which is, you've been doing it for a long time as well. But it just that can get a little bit monotonous sometimes for me. So I actually prefer someone who's a little bit who yeah to be a, a bit, bit more wrong. experienced. Experience. Probably someone that um wants to be like aesthetically muscular, but or also a particular sport, and they want to. Pre- yeah, maybe sport or just someone that wants to actually be athletic. So, okay, uh, someone that, not a bodybuilder purely, someone that doesn't want to sacrifice flexibility. I quite like, um, I quite like it when I've got like a client that's super strong, but they're also really flexible. Yeah, so they've got that's the back. Like, yeah, I feel like that's like true athleticism is being like looking muscular and ascetic, but actually being able to yeah. do a pistol squat or do tricep dips. Ba- at the ring. Basically, a gymnastic. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't. But I don't necessarily I, want them to be able to do that do, when they arrive. Yeah, I know. So if someone comes and says, "I want to be able to do my first chin up," yeah. Now, if they're free stone overweight, then I just have to get them to lose free stone overweight. Which yeah. obviously we can do that, but it's not that exciting because we're not going to be doing that much chin up training. Whereas if someone comes and they're just weak, but they're a healthy weight, that's yeah. interesting because we're in with 
train. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, train, so. it's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Have you got any um, funny or embarrassing moments you've had that you can share working as a personal trainer? Oh, Tom. Um, don't worry if not. <laughs> I think I, well, I, it's about myself, really. Do you actually remember you were there? But I don't think. I think I know what you're going to say. Go on. Yeah, so I was doing box jumps. Yeah, go on. And uh, me being me, I was really meant to do 10, and we were doing an AMRAP at the time. Yeah. And we were going for it, and I was like, I'm going to do an extra one. Just one more. One for more. For no reason. For no reason. And I absolutely smashed my shin on the edge of the on the edge of the box, and um, yeah, never lived that down. Didn't you have to go straight to A&E? Straight, yeah, straight to A&E. So, I know that. Yeah. So you have stitches or glue yeah. or what? I think it was glue actually. They glued it, but yeah. you could see the bone. And I can remember, I can remember uh, Rachel and Caroline was there as, as well at the time. And she was like, they were like, oh yeah, look at that. And they were like staring. I'm like, guys, I can't look at that. I went a bit faint from it, to be honest. I'm a bit <laughs> but um, yeah, still got the scar for it there. And um, yeah, that's probably, I wouldn't say that's the funniest. Don't know. I, it was embarrassing. You didn't really faint though. I did nearly faint, you know. That's the embarrassing. That's the embarrassing bit, yeah. Blood, not good, good with blood. No, that's fair. Uh, I haven't had to, I haven't had to, I've had some that I won't mention because it involved people. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, but I'll get what I Out of the ones that I can. Pressing too hard, probably. <laughs> out of the ones that I can mention. Do you know, this is embarrassing more just from, from like a personal, like it, it really got to me. Or I found it embarrassing, but I've like booked out sports halls to run classes. This right. is before I ran a gym. Okay. In my earlier years. And I've had like one person turn up. Yeah. So I've flyered, booked a hall, advertised, um, run a circuits class. You imagine I've got like weights, set a whole yeah. circuit up. Because if you haven't got a pre booking, if you've got like a pay on the day system, yeah. you get 20 or you get like one. Yeah. And uh, I've just had one person turn up. That's a stranger that I don't know. And that is so embarrassing. It is so awkward. And then I have to like, count. they're expecting like class level enthusiasm. Yeah. And well, to be honest, even one, two or three people is just as awkward. Yeah. If they're expecting something bigger. So if I get two people turn up and they're expecting a two to one PT, not awkward at all. Yeah. But if they have the expectation, so I've hired halls. And it's actually- Big hall, two. Yeah. Uh, and I pay. <laughs> I'm paying them to train. It's cost me more to hire the hall. I've also run boot camps on a field, set up the boot camp, and then and maybe the weather's been bad and stuff like that. Yeah. I've had no one turn up. Yeah. And it's demoralizing. Putting yourself out of there like that, that's the fear. That ever, that's why no one does it, it's no. that fear. Now, obviously, I'm doing fine now. Yeah. I run a gym, our yeah. classes are going well, but I've definitely had all of those days I can imagine that's not easy, and that. But how do you, you know, how do you pick yourself up from that? It's just hard. It's hard. It, yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, I think. I I try and tell myself, you don't know what doesn't work until you try it. And my my biggest regret from my whole career is spending too long to make all of my mistakes. Yeah, I wish I'd been more gutsy and made all my mistakes within the first two years because yeah. I was very conservative and instead of making all my mistakes early yeah. and then that tells you what works because yeah. it tells you what doesn't work and then you can start doing what works earlier instead I spread it out over the first five years of my career and now I don't mind so much I'll try a new class I'll put on the new thing and I'm like all right if it hasn't built within three to five sessions within yeah. this show no progress I'll just axe it no shame. I tried it. And yeah. Eventually, you find something that works, and then we'll keep that. Yeah. So yeah, I spent too long um, being very conservative with, it's, and it's pride really that's holding you back from doing that. Yeah, you care what people think at the time. Yeah, and also like it feels like a fail. No one wants to fail pub no. publicly. That will make yeah. If you fail, well, they say there's a saying. What makes you? What's the saying? I don't know. Fail fast, fail early. That's a. Yeah. You know. There was that. There was a couple of sayings, but. I on it it might come back to me that one all right let's, let's finish with uh what advice would you give someone considering a career as a personal trainer today don't do it <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> um i would say be 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 ballsy um 
be confident and also look into do look into doing something different. Don't be the stereotypical personal trainer that's gonna do focus focus on something that you're good at and you know that you're good at and go down that route. That's my best advice. I actually wrote down the same advice. Basically stick to what you're confident in doing. Yeah. If you're if you're not confident in teaching something, it's so obvious. If you if, you, if for example, if you're a if you're not a, if you're a bodybuilder, great, do it. If you're not, I personally wouldn't go down that route. Yeah, don't try and teach flexibility yeah. to someone. If calisthenics, you, yeah, on, you're yeah, not yeah. going to calisthenics, then why would you take yeah. class? With Stick to what you yeah. know, and if you learn new things, you can start yeah. teaching them. But yeah, definitely make sure you're competent in whatever you're teaching. Yeah. There's always someone that wants to learn what you know. Exactly, and I think I also think if you can follow someone that's very similar to how you like things and again going back from my past when you are going to be doing your quali- qualifications go and shadow some pts yeah go and shadow them go and speak to them because they'll let you they'll they'll they love it they'll let, they want you to be there they'll want you to you know learn from them um and this is one of the you know one of the things that i think people struggle with going back into coming as a pt they want you to they want you to feel that you can actually go into the job and feel how you should feel as a PT and that's being confident and know what you're doing. I've got a similar point actually. It's don't see other trainers as competition. No. I think that looks like the worst bit about being yeah. a PT where you see a toxic environment. It's almost like a car sales room where, you know, like someone comes into yeah. the gym and all the other trainers are competing with one another to get that client. Uh, and, and there's su- such a toxic atmosphere. Or it'd be better if you were like all friends and realized that, all right, that person is like yeah. your kind of person. This is my, not that you're going to pick and choose, but just realize that different people are going to pick different personalities. Yeah. It's not one big like shark tank. And th- and this is why, again, quite a few P- PTs now have their own PTs. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Really, and you, and that people go, oh, well, you've got a PT. And you go, yeah. Especially believe in the job. Well, I need some accountability as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need someone that I can, you know, rely on to give me that push. Yeah. I'm giving everyone else the push. So who's going to push me? And that's that's quite a big thing. And that's speaking to other PTs at the moment. They they all have their own PT for that reason. And, Great. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, Hopefully, probably. some potential PTs or anyone find this interesting. Yeah, it'd be great. Get okay, you on again. Find yeah. some more topics. Yeah, that'd be cool.